G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit fun. War Thunder has a very wide array of jets and a very wide array of vehicles in general. Uh, and of course, being a game, nothing is perfect. In fact, being real life, nothing is perfect. And War Thunder has its uh, little flaws. Not every single jet is competitive. And of course, some jets are a lot more competitive than others. Other jets just don't seem to want to be competitive. And today, we're going to do something a little bit fun and have a look at those jets that are not as competitive. We're sort of going to be having a light-hearted look at these. We're not going to be doing any in-depth stuff. Just sort of something a little bit fun, a little bit light-hearted, a little bit relaxed. And of course, we can all have a laugh at uh, watching me suffer through these planes. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. First up we have the A5 Sabre. Now the A5 Sabre is probably one of the most hated jets in War Thunder simply because it is not as competitive as any of the other jets at its respective battle rating. It definitely doesn't deserve a down tier because it would absolutely ruin the 7.3 matches. However, the A5 Sabre just is in that limbo area where it's not terribly competitive against the 8.7s that it faces but it is too strong to go down in battle rating and gets stomped by the 9.7s that it faces in up tiers, which are quite common for an 8.7 jet. The A5 Sabre does come with Browning 50 caliber machine guns, but unfortunately those machine guns aren't terribly potent, and you do need to close the distance quite rapidly and have plenty of gun time in order to make use of them. Unfortunately the A5 Sabre doesn't really see many opportunities and is kind of left behind in the dust. Next up we have the F4C. The F4C used to be the dominant top tier plane until it was superseded by the F4E, the MiG-21 SMT and the MiG-21 MF and now the MiG-21 BIS. The F4E lacks the superior avionics of the F4E and it lacks decent air to air armament. It only gets AIM-9Es and AIM-7Ds which are both absolutely rubbish and it does not have the speed or engine power to compete with things like the MiG-21 BIS or even the MiG-21 SMT and MiG-21 MF. The F4C really does struggle in its avionics as well, not having a great radar and having to grind out the RWR as well as not even having flares to protect yourself from something like an R60 or an AIM-9J. The F4C is also very fat and cannot get a lot of gun time on jets that are quite maneuverable which is very, very common at top tier. The F4C is one of the saddest planes in War Thunder, and whilst I need to do a video on it, I don't really want to because it is extremely frustrating to play. The next plane that we have up on the list is a plane that only its mother could love, the Heinkel 162. Well, in fact, I don't even think its mother loves it. It is that damn bad. The Heinkel 162 comes in two variants, the uh, A1 and I think the A2. One, the only difference really is that they have uh, different armament. One has 20mm MG151s, which is the Tech Tree variant, and it is by far a lot better than the other variant with the 30mm MK108 cannons. Even though it does have two MG151s, it still is a terrible, terrible plane because it cannot get its guns on target, and when it does, it bleeds all of its speed and just get swept up by super props all day long. The Heinkel 162 is a terrible plane and should be avoided at all costs, unless of course you want to do some fancy carrier landings or upside down landings like Smiggle type. Next up we have two planes that are not really that great, but they do have a fairly good reason to not be so great. These are the Jaguars. Well on screen you're going to be seeing the Jaguar A, and in the British tech tree we have the Jaguar GR1. Both of these planes are ground attackers and are therefore not quite as capable as their tech tree fighter compa uh, compatriots in these battle ratings. You will see that 10.0 does get up tiered a lot to 10.7 and as a result the Jaguars are not very fun planes to fly. They are extremely stressful and they do not compete well as a fighter which is kind of to be expected but still kind of makes the list as a really bad plane. To top it off the Phantoms have a fairly decent bomb load and you will get outrun and outdone by phantoms all day long. And on top of that, a lot of the American planes have a much better armament and better armament for ground RB. 
even things like the G91s, the G91 R3 and R4, all have fairly capable bomb loads and uh, missile loads more importantly, which are a little bit more suited to the high tier gameplay than this supersonic ground attacker. Hopefully in the future we can get some more competitive variants with something a little bit more competitive to arm them with, but for now we're kind of stuck with these ones which is not really the end of the world, but it's still nice to have them. Next on the list is the plane that absolutely no one flies for a very good reason. This is the G91YS. The G91YS was actually fairly decent when it was introduced, got nerfed by an increase in battle rating so it suffered, got reduced in battle rating because it was suffering and then dominated, and then got put back up to 10.0. This plane has basically gone from buff to nerf several times. And at the moment it is in a fairly large trough, which is extremely painful. This plane does not have any decent avionics, does not have any decent missiles, and only does 1134 at sea level. My god, the poor G91YS suffers quite a lot. It is not a very good fighter at this battle rating, and all you can really expect from it is pain and suffering. It does have two DFA 30mm cannons, but you will never ever be able to get within close enough range to use them because most planes will outfly you, outspeed you, outmissile you, and of course outgun you. Poor G91YS, he suffers too much and should go down in battle rating very, very quickly. Next up on the list, we have every F 104 from A through to S. War Thunder's F 104s were introduced earlier last year. And the A and C variants actually did fairly well in the beginning. Too well, in fact. And they were up tiered to 10.0, which is where they sit today. The lower tier F-104s, all the way up to the German F-104G, are pretty lackluster. They don't have very good armament, and of course they can be run down by Phantoms and MiGs, like nothing else. They're basically food for that particular battle rating, and they don't really have a place. As for the Chinese F-104, it is probably the best one there, with four AIM-9Js, however, if a Phantom wants you, there's pretty much no escape. There's nothing that you can do, you can't outroll the missiles, you can't outroll the guns, there is absolutely nothing that you can do. If you're in an F-104S, you can run all day, but that's about it until your fuel runs out, and then you'll get sniped by a missile, like an AIM-9E, or an AIM-7E as well. You are basically just a dart that flies around, and darts that fly around belong in Tanks RB. But even the F-104 isn't good enough for Tanks RB, so in the hangar it remains for just about 90% of the player base. Next up we have the MiG-19S. Now the MiG-19S isn't a terrible plane per se, however it is certainly one of the least competitive planes at its tier. 10.0 is a really bad spot for most jets, and 10.0 is kind of appropriate for the MiG-19S. However, at this battle rating, it does see a lot of Phantoms and a lot of planes with better avionics. The poor MiG-19S has to deal with these, all with no missiles, no RWR, and no radar. The MiG-19S also has three NR-30 cannons, which whilst being an upgrade from the MiG-19PTs to NR-30 cannons, tends to not be quite as good, it, especially it being a little bit harder to aim the NR-30s, especially if you do not have any experience with MiG guns. The MiG-19S is one of those planes that you kind of clean up the scraps, and whilst that can be fun, it's not one of the planes that is very dominant on the battlefield. For me, the MiG-19S is actually fairly decently fun, but like I said, if you're inexperienced with MiGs, you are going to have an extremely hard time. Next up we have the F9F Panther. Now this is different to the F9F8 Cougar. The F9F-2 and F9F-5 Panthers are kind of crap. They're probably one of the worst planes at this battle rating, and that's solely because they don't have the acceleration that other jets have at that tier to really cope with dealing with the flow of a battlefield. The Panthers are naval jets and therefore are quite heavy, and that really doesn't help their case. Things like MiG-15s can quite happily sit behind them, but they can also zoom and basically go wherever they want without the F-9Fs having any say or any ability to sway the uh, outcome of the battlefield. 
the F9Fs really do lack in that respect, and whilst being fairly decent in a group, are uh, really no match for MiGs, and that's my biggest problem with the F9Fs. Not only that, but you do have to deal with a lot of planes that are starting to get air-to-air -air missiles at that tier, especially things like Sabres, which will be able to outspeed, out energy, and of course will have some juicy missiles, which are right for your engine. Very tasty indeed. If you're a masochist and hate yourself, this plane will be absolutely perfect for you. The F-84F is probably one of the most frustrating and painful planes to fly that I have ever touched. It was recently added to the game and sits at battle rating 8.7 where it gets dunked on by just about everything that it faces. It's not fast enough to outrun a MiG-15, but it can't turn it and it can't basically shake it off its ass. The MiG-15 will be able to do everything that the F-84F can do, and whilst the F-84F does do 1100 on the deck, you will basically never see that, because by the time you reach that, either all of your team will be dead, or there will be a MiG that is sitting on your ass waiting for you to uh, run out of fuel. The F-84F does have 650 cals, but uh, good luck getting them on target, and good luck retaining the energy that you need to sustain in a dogfight. The F-84F is probably the most dogshit plane that has given me an absolute hatred of the thing and I hope never to see this plane ever again in my life until Gaijin does something for it that makes it somewhat competitive. Next up we have the F2H Banshee. This particular plane is whilst not terrible at the moment considering that 8.0 is getting a fair few down tiers, the F2H Banshee is extremely struggling in a full up tier and in a full up tier you'll see things like the MiG 17AS and the G91s, which are extremely powerful and can basically do exactly what you can do, but slightly better. The F2H Banshee is also a starter jet, which means that players that have zero experience with jets can quite literally get it right off the bat, which is extremely bad for these newbies. It is not an easy jet to fly, and at that it is not a particularly well-performing jet. For me, the reason why it makes this list is simply because of that. I had this jet as my starting jet and I uh, faced MiG-17s every single match, but really the MiG-15s are where the pain is at, and with the MiG-15 Norton Biss being at 8.3, this thing is an extra struggle bus simply due to that. Next up we have all the ME-262s. Now the ME-262s used to be okay, but basically over the period of a uh, few years, starting from 2015 through to about 2019, they've been very very slowly power crept by other jets that are much better. Things like the SK-60 coming into War Thunder at battle rating 7.3 and uh, the F-80C going down to 7.7 .7, as well as a lot of super props coming back up and getting stronger such as the P-51H Mustang and the Spitfire Mark 24 have basically rendered the uh, ME-262 fairly useless overall. Whilst not being terrible, it does tend to struggle a fair bit, and with the 30mm cannons, it is extremely difficult to aim. Considering you get 360 rounds between four guns, that doesn't help your case either, especially considering that the MK-108s are fairly quickly firing. For me, it is kind of sad that this jet's actually as low as it is in terms of its performance, and uh, all three of them could, in my opinion, do with a little bit of love. Next up we have the Yak-38M, and you might be surprised to see the Yak-38M in this list, but the only thing it really has going for it is its R60s. It sits at battle rating 9.7, so it does see top tier, and in the background footage you will see me absolutely struggling against things at its battle rating and at top tier. The uh, Yak-38M really doesn't have a lot going for it. It turns very poorly, and when it does it bleeds all of its speed. Its flaps basically don't do anything good for it, its thrust vectoring only kicks in at low speed, and of course, its ground capabilities are nothing really special. The Yak-38M, whilst being an interesting meme plane, doesn't really have any good combat capabilities, particularly in the realm of dogfighting. It is a fairly okay sort of run around the map and uh, try and snipe things that are kind of slow kind of plane, but apart from that, it's really not that great. I don't rate it high, uh, and even when you get the five gun pods, good luck trying to hit something, because they are incredibly hard to aim. Next up on the list, we have another ground attacker. This is the A32A. The A32A is one of those poorly performing 9.0 jets that just doesn't get the love that it needs. 
Whilst being an attacker, and rightfully so, is not as powerful as its fighter counterpart, the A32A really does lack in both the ground attack and the air combat capabilities. It only has 360 rounds of 20mm cannon between four guns, which leaves you fairly limited in your ammunition capacity. It's also a lot slower than the uh, fighter version, the J32B, and also carries a fairly lackluster set of armament. It does get 12 tiny Ivans, but they both fire um, off the same wings at the same time, and uh, meaning you only get 6 fires of it. To top that off, they are extremely inaccurate, and the bomb load that it gets is fairly lackluster as well. It doesn't really make a good ground attacker. You're better off taking something like a vampire instead, where you're almost guaranteed to get better kills. Which is really sad, because the A32A also lacks as a fighter. It handles like a bus, it's not particularly fast, and of course it sits at 9.0, so it gets up tiered all the way to 10.0, where the planes that it faces really just absolutely roll over it. Poor A32A is a very sad plane, and there is some very sad gameplay to back it up. This was recorded on stream, and of course, a link to my live streams will be in the description below for you to check out. Thank you very much, guys. The next plane on the list is the ME-163, and you might be thinking, well, Mr. Spitfire, it's not a jet, it's rocket, suka. Well, you would be correct, it is a rocket plane, but you know what, it's still tier 5, and uh, this is my list, I can do whatever I want with it, too bad for you. This plane, whilst being fairly interesting and fairly, well, pretty good at climbing and pretty good at turning, does lack a critical thing, and that is fuel capacity, giving it a very limited combat time. Not only that, it is very low on ammunition, and uh, to be honest, you can throw the BI and the KA200 in this mix as well. Both of the, all these planes sort of suffer from the same issues. Not enough ammunition, not enough fuel, and of course, fairly decent uh, performance otherwise. These planes are very, very hard to get used to, but you know what, they're not too bad when they're in a down tier, and they are a lot of fun when you get the hang of them. It's just the 163 at 8.7, kind of faces 9.7s, which isn't really fun. Not only that, but the other tech tree variants are kind of lackluster as well, particularly on larger maps. The last plane on our list today is the Q5 Fantan. This covers both the Q5 Early and the Q5A, which sit at 9.7 and 10.0 respectively. Now the Q5 Early is actually not too bad, considering that it is 9.7. You will face F4Es, which does make it fairly useless. However, in a full down tier, you do have a little bit of fun to have. However, this plane comes with NR23s that are basically copy-paste or Chinese-made, and it also is fatter than the MiG-19 because it has a bomb bay. It also doesn't have any radar, doesn't have any ballistic computers, and the Q5A has RWR, but that is about it. This plane, as a ground attacker, is absolutely garbage as well, having very limited bomb and rocket capabilities. Overall, I have had a little bit of fun in this plane at sort of uh, 9.7, 10.0, and a little bit at 10.7, but most of the kills that I've gotten are basically fairly easy kills that you could have gotten with any other plane. Regardless, in saying that, I've actually had some fun playing this plane. It is not a good plane, but it can be fun in the right hands. So ladies and gents, this is my little list of what I would consider to be the worst jets in War Thunder. There are obviously jets that are worse, and of course this doesn't cover stock jets, this covers fully spaded jets. Uh, the list of course is just a sort of proprietary little list that I've put together. Just a little bit of fun to sort of laugh at some of the lower end jets on the uh, competitive spectrum if you will. Don't take this list too seriously, of course this will probably change in the future. Things like the G91YS should, in my opinion, go down. And of course, the solution to all of these jets, or at least most of them being uncompetitive, is to increase the battle ratings so that you decompress the matchmaker a little bit more. Now, of course, Gaijin isn't likely to do that, but we can only dream. For now, we can have a little bit of a laugh and sort of look at the more fun side, if you will, of uh, these particular planes, which is making the content creators who play them suffer. Anyway, ladies and gents, Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your view. I really appreciate the way that the channel has absolutely exploded in the last month. Thank you so much for watching.
the support has been incredible. If you guys would like to leave likes, leave comments, feed that algorithm for me, that would be absolutely fantastic. I sincerely appreciate all of that support. All of those people that support me monetarily as well, either that be through the Air Models affiliate link in the description below, through subscriptions to my Twitch channel, or donations on Patreon, or donations on stream. Either way, you guys really make a difference. You guys are basically helping me put together what I would consider one of the PCs that I've wanted to build for a very, very long time. I am getting an upgrade, and uh, once the Ryzen 9 5950X comes in, I will basically have a very nice uh, rendering rig. I also plan to put an RTX 3080 in the rig as well, and that'll go nicely with an X570 motherboard and 32 gigs of RAM. All made possible by you guys, which I am extremely grateful for. So, ladies and gents, without further ado, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.